take a look at the billionaire lifestyle of El Mencho. We've all heard about the lavish lifestyles of infamous drug lords, such as Pablo Escobar and El Chapo, who spent millions on the world's most exotic and luxurious things. But there are many more like him, including the most wanted man in Mexico, El Mencho. In this video, we'll take a closer look at El Mencho's insane lifestyle and billionaire status. But before we get into that, let's examine his rise to power first. El Mencho, the leader of the Jalisco New Generation Cartel, CJNG, has been on the run for over 20 years and evaded capture by law enforcement agencies. The US government is offering up to $10 million for information leading to his arrest. But El Mencho remains elusive. His operations have expanded across Mexico and several states in America, and he is considered one of the most powerful drug lords in the world. However, El Mencho's rise to power did not happen overnight, like many others in the drug trade. He was exposed to it from a very young age. He left elementary school after his fifth year to work in avocado fields. However, these were not ordinary fields, but were owned by the Millennial Cartel, one of Mexico's most financially powerful cartels. The family was trafficking marijuana and hiding it in the fruits, and El Mencho became an active participant. From his early involvement in the drug trade, El Mencho has grown to become a ruthless kingpin with a vast drug empire. For so long, his ability to evade capture has made him a legend in the criminal underworld and a top priority for law enforcement agencies. He started as a plantation watchman and later became a trafficker, but he had bigger aspirations. He left the fields behind and illegally moved to Northern California, where he became involved with heroin and methamphetamine gangs, building his network El Mencho frequently traveled to Mexico and the United States under aliases like Roberto Sagalo or Miguel Valades. However, El Mencho's criminal activities did not go unnoticed. He was arrested by the San Francisco police in 1989 for stolen property and carrying a loaded gun. In 1992, he was arrested again for selling drugs and deported back to Mexico. Nevertheless, El Mencho re-entered the US three years later on federal drug charges. Along with his brother, Abraham, El Mencho was caught carrying out a heroin deal. Despite being younger than his brother, El Mencho recognized that they were being set up and warned his brother. However, the police caught on to their wiretap and both brothers were arrested. El Mencho pleaded guilty to save his brother from a life sentence and was sentenced to five years in prison, serving three of them at the Big Spring Correctional Center before being deported back to Mexico at 30. However, this did not deter El Mencho from continuing his criminal activities. He became a full member of the Millennial Cartel and rose through the ranks, starting as a member of the assassin squad that protected drug lord El Maradona. His criminal activities continued to escalate and he became one of the most wanted men in Mexico. In August 2003, a rival gang called Rosetes in Michoacan forced the Valencia family to exile to Jalisco, while El Mencho relocated to Guadalajara. There, he formed an agreement with the powerful Sinaloa cartel headed by El Chapo. Under their alliance, Nemesio and his group took care of the Sinaloa cartel's operations in Colima and Jalisco for the next few years. After the Millennial Cartel's leader, Oscar Neva Valencia, also known as El Lobo, was arrested in 2009, his brother, El Tigre, was caught less than a year later, causing the cartel to fall apart. El Mencho stepped in, but internal conflicts led to an internal war, and the Millennial Cartel was split into two factions. One side was called La Resistencia, while the other was known as Los Matazetas, led by El Mencho. The two groups fought for territory in Jalisco, and the Zetas killers started a propaganda campaign against their rivals, denouncing extortions led by La Resistencia against civilians, businessmen, and government authorities. Eventually, Los Matazetas won the war, and the group changed its name to CJNG. As the leader of CJNG, El Mencho grew his organization at an exceptional rate, from a small territorial expansion to one of the leading criminal organizations in the country, and became a most wanted man. El Mencho rose to power through aggressive and violent tactics, expanding his drug operations in Jalisco and surrounding states. As Mexico's former top crime boss was gone, El Mencho saw the path to the top was clear for him. His CJNG fought off other criminal groups in the region with direct attacks against Mexico's special forces, earning him the reputation of being the principal enemy of the state. According to sources, he is solely responsible for the drug trafficking operations in the states of Jalisco, Colima, and Guanajuato. His organization has a base for methamphetamine production and trade in Guanajuato, and is rumored to have ties with criminal groups across the globe. The CJNG is one of Mexico's most profitable criminal gangs, 
with assets estimated at around $50 million. One of the reasons for Elemental's success is his ability to use market and consumer changes to his advantage. Initially, the CJNG produced methamphetamine, but as consumer demand changed, Elemental moved to heroin production. He is also known as the core distributor of fentanyl, which has surpassed heroin as America's deadliest banned drug in recent years. Another reason for his success is his discipline. He doesn't do drugs or drink alcohol, and avoids mistakes made by other leaders. In addition, El Mancho exercises regularly and stays fit at all times. He rarely shows up in public and prefers to stay in remote compounds, which are difficult for authorities to breach. The drug lord uses tactics like acid baths, hangings, and even cannibalisms. And some of these brutal acts are posted on social media. The CJNG specializes in corrupting officials and killing those in their way. In 2018, the head of DEA team tasked with finding El Mancho, Kyle Mori, believed that the drug boss was worth at least 500 million US dollars and could even be worth over a billion. Yet, despite his wealth, El Mancho does not flaunt it by showing up at expensive restaurants or driving through the streets of Mexico in Lamborghinis. Instead, he prefers to stay hours away from busy cities and likes power over money. Authorities have taken control of many of El Mancho's establishments over the years, including luxurious cabins, more than 100 Japanese restaurants, shopping malls, newspapers, real estate, a tequila brand, gold bars, and even a ranch with exotic animals. However, El Mencho remains at large, evading capture by the authorities. There have been many attempts to capture El Mencho, but he always manages to escape. In August 2012, the Mexican Federal Police in Tanaya engaged in a shootout with CJNG gunmen and six were killed. Reports suggested that El Mencho was captured in operation, but the Mexican government later confirmed that he was not in custody. Since then, authorities have been unable to get close to the kingpin. The CJNG is highly committed to ensuring that El Mencho never gets caught. The group has developed coordinated tactics to prevent his arrest, such as blocking highways and roads by setting vehicles on fire to use them as blockades. In March 2015, CJNG gunmen ambushed a federal police convoy and killed five police officers and three civilians to protect El Mencho, who was in the area for a meeting. El Gringo, one of El Mencho's closest associates, was also killed in a shootout with federal police in Jalisco. Following a command from El Mencho, the leader of the Jalisco New Generation Cartel, CJNG, his group launched a series of attacks on the Mexican federal police, resulting in multiple deaths and injuries. The attacks included blocking roads in San Sebastian and firing at a Jalisco State Police convoy, which killed 15 policemen and injured five more. The police chief of Sojoalco de Torres was also killed by CJNG hitmen. The Mexican government responded by launching Operation Jalisco, a military-led campaign to tackle more organized crime in the state and capture its leaders. Reports showed that El Mancho was in Tanida prompting the security forces to go after him. Several roads were blocked in the small town of Via Purification to immobilize law enforcement and help El Mencho escape safely. His men set 39 buses, 11 banks, and 16 gas stations on fire, and the fight spread through 20 different towns and three neighboring states. However, authorities are uncertain of his whereabouts, as he doesn't stay in one place for too long. El Mencho's inner circle comprises mercenaries with former military training, and his second security circle is rumored to be much larger. He surrounds himself with men willing to sacrifice their lives for him. El Mencho is the lead defendant in a federal indictment, accusing him of leading and continuing a criminal enterprise. He is also charged with conspiring to send large amounts of drugs into the United States and using firearms in drug trafficking. He also faces meth trafficking charges from a 2013 federal indictment in Mississippi. Two years ago, it was reported that the drug lord suffered from kidney disease and had built a whole hospital in El Evasiva. Earlier this year, there were rumors that El Mencho had died from respiratory arrest while undergoing treatment in a private hospital in Guadalajara. However, there has been no confirmation of this news. Comment your views and subscribe for more.